Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in one of the previous videos we talked about some of the top discoveries related to space of 2019. But because the decade has technically come to an end, I also wanted to talk about some of the top discoveries of the entire decade between 2010 and 2020. Let's discuss this in this video and welcome to What The Myth. Now a lot of scientists refer to the past decade as the decade of exoplanets. And there's a pretty good reason why. This right here is the Kepler telescope, which you can also find simulated in this free software known as NASA's Eyes on Solar System. And in this beautiful simulation you can even see the location where it discovered most of its stars. And obviously Kepler is famous for discovering thousands upon thousands of different exoplanets including some of the more famous exoplanets that were discovered in the last decade, such as for example the famous TRAPPIST-1 system and the nearby Proxima Centauri that has the planet known as Proxima b. But for Kepler you can see how it was looking at this region of the skies and this is where it was able to discover most of the exoplanets. And so to me personally this is definitely one of the biggest discoveries of the past decade. All of the exoplanets we were able to find. The other big achievement of the past decade was of course the New Horizons mission. This was the mission to Pluto and ironically it was launched when Pluto was still considered to be a planet and then it lost that status but this beautiful probe was able to not just visit Pluto but also the most distant object in the solar system that we've visited so far. The object that was recently renamed Arakoth. You'll see it in a few seconds on your screen. This is kind of what NASA believes it looks like based on all of the observations and the simulations. And I've previously talked about this object quite thoroughly, including explaining the reasons why we think it's so flat right here, so you can check this out in some of the previous videos. But the incredible flyby of Pluto by the New Horizons was definitely a huge achievement for humanity, something that we can only dream to try to recreate again in the nearby future. Another huge mission that was ended in the last decade was the famous Cassini mission. This was actually a two-part mission, the Cassini Huygens, and the Huygens probe landed on Titan in the previous decade, so it doesn't actually count. But the Cassini mission spent very, very long time uh, orbiting around Saturn and discovered some incredible things, including, of course, the geysers of Enceladus that was probably one of the biggest discoveries um, around Saturn in the last few years. And honestly, just the fact that we were able to achieve all of this and um, the fact that the mission lasted for such a long time, specifically 13 years in orbit around Saturn and 20 years in space in general, this was a huge achievement. And the last part, the so-called Cassini Grand Finale, was a very beautiful end to this very impressive mission. And this is something that humanity will hopefully remember for a very long time, but I also hope we will try to recreate something with even more grandeur. Another monumental achievement for space science were all of the comet encounters and of course the landing, all of which started with the Deep Impact mission that ended up visiting this comet right here in the last decade and this one in a decade before. And the biggest achievement being the uh, Rosetta mission that not only was able to collect a lot of data by orbiting this beautiful comet right here, but also landed a probe here that created this absolutely mind-blowing video that you see on the screen. This is something that I covered on the channel approximately five years ago, and this was technically one of the first videos that really got me into trying to create a lot of space science videos on the channel. Another huge achievement were all of the successful asteroid missions of the last decade. The biggest one was probably this right here, this is the Dawn probe from NASA, that got to do two things. First, it visited Vesta and orbited this beautiful asteroid for um, just over a year, collecting a lot of data about essentially the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, and then it used its innovative technique using ion engines to assume another orbit around Ceres, the closest dwarf planet to Earth. But the biggest technical achievement here was using the ion engines to change orbits in the solar system. This is something that we haven't really done successfully until this particular mission. And in the last few years, in the last decade, we also began a few other asteroid missions, including the mission to asteroid Bennu, the mission to asteroid Ryugu, both of which will be collecting samples and returning them back to Earth, and even the Chinese space agency had their first mission known as Chang'e 2 that actually had an asteroid encounter with this beautiful object known as Tutatis. So this was definitely a huge decade for all sorts of asteroid studies and asteroid encounters, not to mention a lot of firsts. And this was the next first. 
We finally launched a probe to Mercury uh, in the beginning of the last decade. This is the Mercury probe that uh, not only was able to visit Mercury, but even assumed an orbit around Mercury, studying it very thoroughly, and then uh, crashed into the surface of Mercury to do additional studies on impacts. In other words, it was an exceptionally successful mission and first ever mission of such caliber to this beautiful planet. And then, also, last decade, we were able to finally confirm the mystery of Cygnus X1. For a very long time, scientists didn't actually know what exactly it was, but they had speculations, and finally the confirmation came in the last decade that Cygnus X1 was essentially a black hole. And we were finally able to confirm that this was a black hole due to sudden emissions coming from this region. So back then this was a huge discovery, but since then we were able to find a lot more black holes out there and were even able to take a picture of one. But this was also part of my videos on top discoveries in 2019, so we're not really going to repeat this. But this was a huge deal. There were also a lot of firsts from the solar system, including the by now famous uh, Parker Solar Probe, that is slowly making its way closer and closer to the Sun. But last year, or technically last decade, we were able to already make a lot of really interesting discoveries from so close to our Sun. On the other hand, on the opposite side of the solar system, we also discovered the farthest ever objects. One was called Far Out, this was in the beginning, or actually at the end of 2018. And the second object that was even farther away is now known as Far Far Out. Both of these are the farthest and the most distant objects we've discovered so far, so we obviously know very little about them simply because they're just too far away. At the same time, at these distant reaches of space, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes finally left the solar system, allowing us to study um, the actual region of the so-called interstellar space in a lot more detail, and also helping us uncover that there's a lot of really interesting stuff in this region. You can check this out in one of the previous videos I made where I talked about how we've discovered a wall of plasma right here at the edge of the solar system. And even though Voyager 1 left the solar system back in 2012, Voyager 2 only left the solar system in 2019. But while these guys were leaving the solar system, we had a few objects entering the solar system. And for the first time ever, we've discovered two unusual interstellar objects entering our solar system. The first one was this right here, Oumuamua, and the second one is now unofficially known as Comet Borisov. Oumuamua was actually the strange one because it didn't seem to actually possess any kind of cometary tail, but was changing directions. And so a lot of speculation started flying around suggesting that maybe this was some sort of an alien probe. But a lot of different studies tried to disprove this and succeeded quite thoroughly. And today we think that it was just a very different composition of an object that was probably a little bit longer or a little bit thinner, as you can see in this beautiful image created by this wonderful person, Mr. Hartman. Another major event happened in 2013, the so-called Chilabinks meteor. And this was more of a reminder of how fragile we really are when it comes to interstellar objects. This powerful air bullet that exploded in the atmosphere created such a huge aftershock that it ended up destroying a lot of property and even injuring several people. And today we think that this was the most powerful such event in the last hundred or so years. And interestingly, we obviously expect more of these events to happen in the future, which is why it's important for us to learn how to predict and also prevent these events from happening in the future. Because this was a pretty important reminder of this could happen anytime, we would probably not even see it coming, and it could be completely devastating if it hits an actual city. Because with overall power of about 470 kilotons, this was actually more powerful, approximately 20 times more powerful, than those two bombs that were dropped on Japan. So, in that sense, this is something we need to take really seriously. In other news, the last decade was the beginning of the so-called Ice Cube Neutrino Project, this humongous laboratory with these huge protrusions, or I guess in some sense, these really complicated chains of detectors that are suspended from the lab right here. And as you can see from this image, they reach to the depth of about two and a half kilometers. So these are neutrino detectors, for the first time in history, allowed us to not just detect neutrinos, but specifically predict where those neutrinos came from by creating this beautiful 3D map of the origin of every single particle of neutrino that passes through this detector. In other words, it allowed us to create a map of very powerful events happening around the universe and trace them specifically to the location where they came from. This allowed us to trace back a lot of cosmic rays, a lot of various powerful explosions, and some of these explosions were more powerful than 
ever detected before, even from some of the nearby supernova that we would not be able to trace otherwise. And altogether, this also brings us to the next major achievement of the last decade, the so-called multi-instrument astronomy, where several different telescopes and several different detectors can collaborate together, allowing us to see something that we were never able to see before. This is exactly how we were able to create this beautiful image of M87, and all of these facilities you see right here were actually able to collaborate and create this image by collecting data individually and then combining it all together. So this is something that was started in the last decade and this is something that will definitely transform our ability to see things and to also detect and discover things in the next decade even better. And then of course we have another major achievement that made the news in the last decade, the gravitational wave detection using the beautiful LIGO detector. So here this is something that a lot of people still don't really understand and technically don't really understand the importance of this, but nevertheless for astrophysics and for scientists was a huge achievement and a major milestone. Something that will be extremely difficult to recreate um, in the next decade, simply because of the costs involved. But these gravitational waves and their discovery and their confirmation is going to definitely change the humanity in the next few decades. We're not entirely sure how yet, but just like a lot of other discoveries, it takes a while for this to become practical and useful. For now, this is a theoretical marvel, but a huge discovery nevertheless. And since the original discovery in 2016, we've been able to detect a lot of gravitational waves coming from various directions. And by using the multi-instrument analysis, we were even able to compare and also confirm that a lot of the gravitational waves do come from collisions of black holes and neutron stars, and also neutron star neutron stars. And so by analyzing neutron star neutron star collision, the scientists were also able to finally confirm that pretty much most of the heavy elements, including gold and platinum, do come from the collision of neutron stars. That's essentially how all of the precious stuff in the universe is made. And this is something that um, LIGO allowed us to confirm as well. Another major achievement was of course the beginning of the Juno mission on Jupiter that already discovered so many amazing things about the planet and about its moons. Now there are still a lot of different things we're going to discover about Jupiter because the mission is far from over, but even today and specifically in the last decade we were able to capture some of the most amazing pictures of Jupiter that were never seen before, some of which were absolutely mind-blowing. And this is of course something we'll talk more about in this decade, because Juno is about to discover a lot more things, but because this mission began in the last decade and already achieved so much, I had to mention it. And one of the biggest discoveries was of course all of the medical studies that were conducted on the International Space Station, including the very famous twin study using these two wonderful people right here. And NASA has a dedicated page to all of the discoveries, describing everything in detail, and we also discussed this on the channel already, but in a nutshell we've discovered a lot of new dangers and hazards of space, including very recently the fact that apparently the blood flow in space tends to sometimes stop or even reverse. So there's a lot of new things we need to understand before we can become a very successful interstellar species. And then of course a lot of Martian discoveries as well, probably most ever as a matter of fact. Most of them came from the Curiosity rover, but also from the now demised Opportunity rover that you see right here, and this beautiful InSight probe that is investigating the internal structure of Mars in order for us to understand what really happened there. But a lot of amazing Martian discoveries happened in the last decade, including of course us confirming that Mars had a lot of water, there were even tsunamis and signs of tsunami waves hitting Martian surface, and we even discovered one of the asteroids that probably caused that tsunami. So a lot of new things were found on the planet already, and I'm sure in the next decade we'll discover even more incredible things. But last decade also saw our return to Venus with the Japanese Akatsuki mission, which was initially kind of a failure, but it took them a while to try to restore the functionality of the uh, actual probe and for the probe to start transmitting all of the data that we have now received. It's actually still active and it's still going to be doing some studies of Venus, but hopefully in the next decade we'll have a lot more things happening and we'll finally get back to Venus and possibly even find life there. And if you'd like to learn more about why there might be life there, check out one of the previous videos. The last decade also saw the beginning of our search for the mysterious Planet 9 or for the possible solution to all of the problems we're observing in the solar system that only a mysterious object could solve. 
There were a lot of studies that tried to possibly explain it otherwise, but for now, the best explanation is that there's an unusual planet somewhere out there that we'll hopefully find in the next, or I guess technically, this decade. So hopefully before 2030 we'll finally be able to discover the main reasons for why we're observing so many unusual signs in the solar system. And if you'd like to learn more about what exactly I'm talking about, check out some of the older videos where I explain what those five unusual observations are. Also, in the last decade we've discovered a lot of planets that could potentially be Earth 2.0, including this one right here, the so-called K218b. TRAPPIST-1 system and TRAPPIST-1 planets also fit this description, with potentially at least one planet we've identified so far being the next Earth, or at least the next habitable planet for potential human colonization. Now, all of this is going to be really exciting with the launch of the James Webb Telescope, because it will allow us to see into the atmospheres of these planets and to study them in a lot of detail. For now, we just know their mass and their density, we don't really know what's on the surface. But all of these potentially terrestrial planets and their discovery were very, very important for us in the last decade, and they're definitely going to explain a lot of things to us in the near future once we discover what's hiding on the surface of these planets, and maybe, possibly even find life there. Another major achievement came from the ESA's Gaia telescope that created the most detailed ever 3D map of nearby stars and essentially allowed us to study many of these stars in a lot of detail because it created a very very specific and exceptionally accurate representation of the nearby space using approximately 2 billion different stars. And even today many studies rely on the data from this telescope to try to understand what's happening to nearby stars and even faraway stars based on all of the motion that we're seeing. This extremely important map is only going to get better and better as we get more data from different stars and eventually we will be able to map the entire Milky Way with extreme precision. But this is something that hopefully will happen in this upcoming decade. And the last but not least are all of the incredible achievements by private organizations such as SpaceX when it came to developing private space programs. Now this is something that is absolutely incredible and the fact that it happened in just a decade is sort of mind-blowing. And imagine if things are going this way, where we will be in about 10 years from now. Now SpaceX is obviously the biggest achiever here, but there are obviously a lot of other smaller companies like the Electron right here that uses 3D printed rockets, or multiple but somewhat secretive Chinese private companies such as this right here, this is Land Space, all of which happened in only a few years and all of this started the last decade. And if it all goes well, we'll hopefully be finding ourselves landing on Mars and even going beyond Mars in the next few years, hopefully by the end of 2030 or the end of this decade. Now we're still not entirely sure what's going to happen to the Chinese space agencies, but hopefully SpaceX and of course Electron and other private organizations in the West will be able to achieve a lot more this decade and create incredible programs that will hopefully take humanity to the next level of space exploration. Although for now all we can say is that it was a really good decade for space exploration and hopefully we'll keep the momentum going but until we learn more, or until we achieve more, that's really it. I wanted to give you a kind of a summary of my personal favorite space discovery, space achievements, and just space things in general of the last decade. And so as we discover new things, I'll make sure to follow them up with new videos. So do subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.